Okay. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to turn on that other light over there. Where is it? I got this one. There you go. Oh, you just turned it off. That one isn't working? Oh, wait a minute. That's, that's what. Okay. There, a little more light so you can see what's going on. Um, we're back. What this is going to be, it's going to be a, a trim and a beard trim. So, um, working on my nephew again, Jeff. And, you know, a lot of times guys will come in and they don't really want a lot off. He doesn't want a lot off. He's kind of liking that full look and stuff. But he does want his beard cleaned, cleaned up. So this is a trim and a beard trim. All right, uh, before I go on, I hope you guys remember my book, Trust Your PhD Stylist. Um, by the way, uh, I also have someone else in my family that wrote a book. She writes some really wild stuff though, uh, my granddaughter. And sometime she's going to come in and we're going to introduce her and I want you to kind of take a look at her book as well. But this has everything to do with hair, all right? Plus some of you, that that's why you're watching this. But some of you that um, want to know about color, that last chapter gives it to you, all right? So trust your PhD stylist. Okay, let's get down to this. On the beard, I'm just going to use my clipper. He said it was okay to do a number two. Well, you always want to go longer instead of shorter. It's just safer when you do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clipper and I have a three and a half on it. I'm going to turn them around this way so you can see it. And I'm just going to lift up his head and bring it out. So you see that I really think a three and a half is going to be what he wants. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, you know, it's wise to go longer first because once you take it off, it's not going to go back. And the direction of growth, you always go against the direction of growth. So I'm going again. He's got some kind of curlies there. And on his hair, on his head, all he wants is a trim. So I wanted to show this to you first. Because, yeah, can you do it with a clipper? Yes, you can. Now, he wants to keep his little tails okay. there. <laughs> can well, can, I, can I take him yeah. off? Because he was talking about just <laughs> curling him up. Dudley, do right. Well, I mean, if he curls him up, he does work <laughs> at, a, at a restaurant. You know, that would definitely raise his tip level a bit, don't you think, when you approach people? But, okay, so you want me to take him off, huh? Take him you off. sure? Yeah. All right. I mean, the middle's already missing. So. Just turn that up to that. So you see, this is nothing. Now, the reason I'm not having him curl his lip, because when you curl the lip to do this, it changes the direction of the hair. You want to do it as natural as you can. Unless you're just taking it off, you want to do it as natural as you can, because he's not going to be walking around with his tongue uh, the lip to do, you know, because isn't that what we normally do when we clean that up? Well, he wants some length, so we want it to look natural. Now, as far as the mustache, again, the same thing. Don't have them curl their lip. When they curl their lip, it brings it down, and so when you cut it, then it pops out. So you want to, when you're trimming the mustache, just follow that lip line. You got a brace now so that you don't go anywhere that you shouldn't with it. See, I'm just following his lip line. Can we take this off? No. No? Okay. Okay. All right. So just basically that's it. And again, when he turns around and looks at you, it looks natural instead of popping out. So those are kind of some of the tricks of the trade on that. And he doesn't want a lot off on his hair. So I'm going to take my three and a half off. 
and um, put my triple zero on, not because I want to take it to the skin, but because I'm going to be using my clipper comb to just give him a trim. He does want it above the ears. He, you know, we do have to clean this area up right here. Did you want me to clean this up later on, or are you okay with that? I'll clean it up. Okay. Now I can't do it on the, you know, to, so you don't you don't go this high though, do you? Uh, to right there, you can. You go to the jawline. Yeah. You okay. Can, you can do it. Yeah. So what that does, and I'll just do it with my triple zero here. What that does, if you look at him, now put your face down a little bit. You see how that makes the jowl look a little heavy. So when that happens, what we want to do is just follow that jawline. And what that does is it gives him a guide. Now you see how that slenderized his face right there. And you can, I mean, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that that totally slenderized the face, brought that up. He doesn't have a double chin. But with the beard down like yeah. that, it makes it look like he does. I would say, I, would say I do have a double chin. No, you don't have a double chin. <laughs> So that's all I'm doing on this side, doing the same thing, and the jaw bone is where you go up to, not beyond it. You're going to go to the jaw bone inside, not outside, all right? And so you just got to kind of see how it's going, but it gives him a guide as when he shaves. Now you can see where that dropped down on him quite a bit. Now I'm going to take it up to the jawline, and I almost have to face him towards the mirror to see if I've got it, and I've got it exactly right for him. But what that does as well is it strengthens that jawline, it creates a nice strong corner there. So I'm going to turn him around this way, now we're going to clean this up. Remember the carving? Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I want you to practice your carving with it. This is why I wanted to trim his hair because basically I'm using my clipper comb to carve. So um, if you watch the previous video that we did, it, uh, you know, it was a clipper cut, but it definitely showed you how to carve, how to hold it, you know, how many times do you have to practice it, and so on. So I'm going to take this now, watch, carving. There you go. See it? Stay on the comb. Do not go one side or the other. Hard. And I want to tighten this up a little bit. See, all I've got is a small corner there. There you go. Now that cleaned that up. I'm going to put my finger on his ear right here. Drop it down just a bit. And go around it. Bring it over this way. Turn it around. There you go. And see, the comb itself is helping me do it. So what I'm going to do now, parietal line, tip of the ear. You notice I was going in this form before. I want to clean that up so that he tapers back real nice. I'm just going to follow the nape line now, and I'm following that exact same line. That's not different. Basically, if this is just a trim, he wants the top to stay the same, but he wants it to look a little bit cleaned up. As a server in a restaurant, you know, you want to look decent. You're taking care of their food. So they want to make sure that your hair isn't in their food. We'll turn him around. Do the same thing. You got it, cameraman? Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, look at how I'm holding it out. See, I'm not holding it flat, holding it out. I want that top a little bit longer. Tip of the ear, parietal line. Still yet. Always brace when you're going to cut at the, at the scalp. Move the ear over, following that exact same line to the back of the ear. Excuse me. A little bit of a dry throat there. All right, so I'm going to tilt him forward. Now, where is that nape line? Like I've said before, 
if you don't know where you're at, how do you know where you're going? Now, do you see this little bit of a hard line right there? I hope you can see it. There's a little bit of a hard line. Why do you suppose that's there and not on the other side? Because this side grows forward. The other side grows back. So in order to get rid of that, I'm going to bring this up. There you go. Got rid of it. See, I took it just a little bit shorter, but it got rid of it. No more hard lines. And in a minute, I'm going to do something with the texture shear to make it go back so he can comb it back. Follow that nape line. That's all I'm doing, traveling around the nape line. See it? That happy face right there. Now I have a corner here. And he's got some really nice cowlicks back here that kind of make you crazy. Let me turn him around so I can see what I got. There you go. Now see, he's got a hard line right there. Take it, turn it, and gently carve into it. Turn it. I'm not going above the nape line. I'm staying within it. There you go. It's cleaned it up a little bit. All of that has to do with those cowlicks. Again, you see me just using my fingertips to do this. Make sure I got that straight. Okay, a little bit more right here. Just a scotch. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want this to go back. Oops, got this caught here. Move my wires. Remember, we're not here to impress you. We're here to teach you. We don't have the fancy place. Uh, I don't have time for that. So I, I just want to teach you. So I hope you get this. I hope you understand it. Okay. Uh, you want to get my shear out, please, cameraman? The, the bottom. Okay. The fancy one there. See that fancy one on the side that's got all those little squiggles? No. Okay, they're not. They don't know what to look for. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, that. That's my texture here. This one. Oh, watch out. Nope, that's a texture here. So you want to fix it? Yeah, I'll use this one. Here's my fancy one, my $700 shear. So, if that ain't fancy, I don't know what is. Okay, so like he said, he doesn't want a lot off. He wants to kind of keep his hair. So we just did the nape line. This area here grows forward. We know that when we brush it forward, it's going to lay nice. It's going to be there. So I'm going to take it. Teeth going back. You've already had some of my classes. You know that. We want this to go back. Now it's laying even a little bit better. Let's go over to the other side. See that little bit of a line right there? I'm going to clean this up right along this area. Teeth going back. See this side grows back. See how nice that just lays back? That's normal. My grandson is normal. God, that's hard to take. <laughs> so we're just kind of cleaning him up a little bit. So that side lays real nice. Remember, we did go in this direction, so we'd already done that on that side. And that's the reason for it. Now the top, he wants that... Um, what I'm looking for is my water bottle. See my water bottle? Not that one. That's, no, not that one either. It's my fancy one that sprays real nice. It's not in there. Okay. Just give me that one there, I guess. Does it have any water in it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It may or may not spray because some of these. Yeah. Eat this. Oh, crap. Well, that's one of them, but that's not. It doesn't have any water in it. No. No. 
I put it somewhere. When so we do the videos, I put my stuff everywhere. Oh, here it is. All right, I found it, y'all. Okay, and I love these because, see, they missed. And they're not cheap, but it's well worth it if you're a stylist. You just have to be careful because, see, it keeps spraying. So what he wants is just that little bit. So we did a trim and a trim. So that's what this video is. It's just a trim and a trim. So I'm going to turn them around this way because I really want you to see what I'm going to be doing here. And pretty much I think what my cameraman's doing, you can hear me but you can't see me, but that's fine. You don't need to see me. You need to learn. All right. So I'm going to take this with the shear. I'm just going to clean up the edges, just a scotch. That's it. Um, you know where the crown is at, right? All this hair is going to be directed to the circle of the crown. So this is going to go in a circle. That guide is going to be right here, center occipital, but basically following the crown line. And you can see his cowlick right there. So we want to make sure that he doesn't stick up. And that's the reason we're going around the crown line. Now the top, he's agreed that possibly uh, take off about an inch, but he still wants some of that falling down on his face. So what I'm going to do now, again, carving. Watch, you just saw that. You saw what I just did. And it's all fingertips. You didn't see me do this. You saw me turn it with my fingers. I'm going to use the shear to help me pick it up. And I'm going to just take off an inch straight across. The reason I'm taking it front to back, in other words, frontal fringe, so I came all the way to the upper ridge on the other side, the part side. Came up to the center at the apex and then the upper ridge on this side. Now I'm at the parietal line. If you study the diagrams, if you study the high twos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This area here, we don't want it to stick up. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it all the way up to the apex and take it off there and bring it back. So you see that that's traveling around in the direction that he wears it. All right. This is the upper ridge. I'm going to bring that down. You can see this. See what happens with the cowlick. See how that fights? Okay, I'm going to take it to the upper ridge again, and all I'm doing now is blending. There's my guide. And comb it back. So it's just a trim and a trim. We didn't do a whole lot. Let me get my fancy texture shear here. So what I'm going to do now, he wants it to go back. So I'm going to subsection it right at, right behind the upper ridge. Now this is going to be difficult for me to show you because I'm going to turn him completely around to show you. The teeth are going to face going back. All right, so let me turn him around. Let me turn him around the other way, you guys, because it's going to knock the camera over a bit. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I want this to lay back. One, two. Take another section. One, two. Now you see my carving. Carve into it. One, two. Carve into it. One, two. Carve into it. One, two. Carve into it. You want to stay away from the hairline. One, two. That's it. So what that's going to do, of course, he's going to lose some hair. You can see that. But what it does, look at that hair just lay back now. Doesn't fight. Just goes back real nice. Just nice lined up going back. So this is what you do. These are the little tricks of the trade. These are your little know-hows. Um, one thing I saw today, and I'm not, again, I'm not condemning it, all right? I'm not, 
I don't like to be negative. I don't like, I mean, I think everybody does things for a reason. But I was uh, working with a friend of mine today, a stylist, and, um, and I've seen barbers do this, and it's not wrong, but it's like, to me, your time, when you're in the hair industry, your time is money. But evidently, some of these people don't know where the lower ridge is at. They don't know where that center occipital is at. So what they do, they take their clipper and literally carve and shave down all of that and create almost like a bowl right there. Well, one of the things that's hardest to get rid of is that hard line they just created. And then they fade it up almost to the parietal line, fighting this hard line. If you know where the lower ridge is at, if you know that, right there, just where the comb leaves the head, all right, there's your lower ridge. Why not carve it up and not fight that and carve it, okay, center occipital, it's going to travel down like this, that's a low fade. So you're going to travel up to it. For me, it's a time saver to know where you're at, so what? Know where you're going. It's not wrong if you want to spend that much time with it. I'd rather go ahead and take a couple more clients instead of spending 45 minutes on one. So, you know, learn how to work smarter, not harder. And again, you know, stylist, barbers, whatever want to do that, it's not wrong. But I, I, I just, you know, to me it's like every time I see it, I go, why are you doing that? Just carve it up into it. Carve it up with your clipper into it. You've already started that fade line. You don't need to then fight it. So just a suggestion, okay? It's just a suggestion, and we do what the we do it the way we're taught. So evidently they're taught that way. But yeah, this is my nephew. This is pretty much it. Not a long area, but you can see that there's the nape line. This is just a trim and a trim on the beard. All right. Take care, guys. God bless. We'll see you again.